There once was a boxer who used beautiful footwork and otherworldly head movement to evade his opponents. A boxer who used distance as a weapon, leading his competitors into some of the most beautiful knockouts ever caught on film. A boxer who kept his hands dangerously low, but was just too fast for it to matter. That boxer was of course named Samart Payakarun. And as well as being a champion pro boxer, he also happened to be the greatest Muay Thai fighter of all time. Competing during the golden age of Muay Thai, Samart was light years ahead of his time. Incorporating complex boxing footwork and head movements similar to Muhammad Ali's into his Muay Thai repertoire. If Samart had used more common movements from boxing, his attempts to blend them with Muay Thai's staple techniques may have been a totally futile endeavor. But the cross steps, L steps, backwards shifts, and pulls used by Ali and Sugar Ray Robinson before him turned out to be perfect additions to Samart's unique style. Ali's footwork pattern was one of the first things ever covered on this channel. It's sidestep, then hop or slide, cross step, and then return to stance. The idea for Ali was to circle deep to the inside of his opponents, squaring them up to expose more targets while he himself remained in a safely narrow stance. This is a great pattern for fighters who wish to dominate exchanges with their lead hand, and as Samart proved, it works equally well for fighters who wish to dominate the fight with their lead leg. Like Ali, Samart's narrow, close stance let him extend the range of his jab while smoothly pivoting offline. But it also had the additional benefit of allowing him to easily lift his lead leg without needing to readjust his balance. In this way, Samart could easily transition between a flicker jab and a lead teep as he gracefully danced around the ring. The more experienced listeners may be wondering how Samart ever managed to use this footwork without falling victim to Muay Thai's infamously brutal leg kicks. The answer is that Samart worked defensive movements directly into his circling footwork pattern. If an opponent tried to leg kick on the first step of the sequence, Samart would simply turn his step into a leg pull, shifting back out of the way. If they went into attack at any other point during the sequence, Samart would check with his rear leg, continuing to pivot and hop off his lead foot as he did so. Another tactic that Samart shared with Ali was to frame off of his opponent as he circled. This worked particularly well in kickboxing because steering an opponent off balance is even easier when they're up on one foot. Before we move on, let's take a quick look at one of the sequences that Samart used to score a knockdown. First Samart teeps and then puts his foot down to the side, the start of his footwork pattern. He next cross steps and hops, but then Rather than hop off his lead foot to extend his jab and create an angle, Samart hops off his rear foot to do the same for his teeth. He lands, cross steps out, and then jabs and circles his way off the ropes. His opponent throws a kick to Samart's exposed body, but Samart uses his extended jab to smoothly parry the kick away. Samart flicker jabs and then steps back as if he were about to retreat. Instead, he intercepts his opponent as he moves in to chase. Notice how Samart's lead hand and foot work together, his perfect balance allowing one to blend seamlessly into the other. Samart then pulls off this same technique again, and again, and again. And the incredible thing is that Samart could pull this off from an orthodox or southpaw stance in an open or closed position. This was similar in concept to the style of defensive genius, Pernell Sweet P. Whitaker, who also used cross steps and slides to dance in a southpaw stance with his right foot forward against orthodox fighters who had their left foot forward. The intricacies of these positions and stances have been covered at length in many previous videos on this channel, but the important point to take away is that most fighters spend their entire careers perfecting only one of these positions in only one stance. Samart so can dominate in all of them. What's more, he used his ability to quickly shift from orthodox to southpaw while circling to set up new lines of attack, either changing stances in order to set up a strike from his new power side, like here where he feints a kick to shift forward to set up a cross. Or cutting an angle to change his lead side in order to sneak in a lead teep or jab.
Of course, all this fancy footwork would have been for nothing if Samart didn't have a powerful weapon with which he could take advantage of the angles he was creating. Ali had his jab, and Samart had his legendary lead teep. In fact, Samart used his lead teep just like a good boxer uses his jab. Mostly ignoring the more traditional blend of a tie march with a rear teep, he instead used his lead leg to keep his distance, pester his opponents, wear them down, and set up more devastating attacks. In the same way that Ali could throw his jab from nearly any direction to angle through his opponent's guard, aiming it like a back fist or corkscrewing it over their shoulder, Samart could find the smallest opening to exploit by changing the path of his teeps. While a regular teep travels in a straight line to the target, Samart would angle his teep in a variety of different ways to exploit whatever opening his opponent showed at that time. Sometimes Samart would throw his teep at a 45 degree angle, something halfway to a roundhouse kick. Other times he would load and turn his hips into his teep like a sidekick, adding a tremendous amount of power. Or occasionally he would even flare his knee outside to throw an inverted roundhouse. This is something you would never expect to see work outside of a point sparring competition. But Samart's lead leg was so versatile, fast, and powerful that he could get away with completely unorthodox movements. Here his opponent catches his leg and tries to throw him off balance. But Samart is too flexible and well balanced, and actually uses his momentum to rebound off of the ropes like a pro wrestler, driving his opponent to the ground. Samart had such great hip dexterity that he could easily pull his leg out if it got caught, or re-chamber it into a check to fend off any counters. The way that Samart chambered and retracted his kicks from multiple positions emphasizes how he had true mastery of the concepts behind the techniques, and therefore had no need to rely on rigid, more traditional movements. To quote a very wise martial artist that some of you may know, Before I learned the art, a kick was just a kick. After I learned the art, a kick was no longer just a kick. Now that I understand the art, a kick is just a kick. In this way, Samart used what was necessary instead of what was strictly correct from a form standpoint. Of course, dancing and flicking out lead teeps was only one part that fit into the whole of Samart's style. To boil it down to just one concept, Samart was the very definition of a natural-born counterpuncher. And what set him apart from the majority of other fighters was that Samart was both a defensive counterpuncher, like Ali, and an offensive counterpuncher, like Tyson. Samart was the perfect realization of Ali's self-titled lean back style in Muay Thai. He would stay just out of range in order to tempt his opponents into overreaching, and then punish them for it. To do this, Samart used a combination of head pulls and leg pulls to set up masterful counters. Upright pulls and slips are perfect additions to Muay Thai. Unlike low-level head movement, Samart's pulls and slips kept his head safely out of the way of kicks and knees, and actually eased his ability to use his lead leg. Notice how Samart uses his head movement here to ease the transition into his lead leg roundhouse. Next, he pulls like he's in the matrix to avoid a kick leaving his opponent off balance and out of position. Samart takes advantage with the lead hook and then follows up with a roundhouse kick to the body as a parting gift. In this way, Samart had one distinct advantage that Ali did not. While Samart was leg pulling or checking, he was free to jab. And while he was pulling or slipping, he was free to kick. For instance, here Samart steps slightly inside in what can only be described as a leg slip and simultaneously connects with a one-two. And here, he blends his motion of slipping an opponent's cross into a lead roundhouse kick counter.
Samar was also a big fan of leaning back in order to draw his opponents into overreaching, so he could drive a knee right into their stomach as they tried to close the distance. That's not to say that Samar didn't occasionally use low-line head movement. Here he ducks underneath an opponent's punch to get a lock, and then throws them to the floor. Samart combined these techniques with another staple of boxing footwork, the L step. The major benefit of this movement in a kickboxing context is that the first part of the L step is an evasive leg pull, and the second part moves the fighter offline, setting up a new angle of attack. Or it could even turn into a kick. Here's a beautiful example. Samart escapes the ring using an L-step and moves nearly 180 degrees, smoothly transitioning into a roundhouse counter. Years later, mixed martial artists like Demetrius Mighty Mouse Johnson and Max Holloway would heavily rely on the L-step for this exact same reason. Behind all of Samart's high-level techniques was an impeccable sense of timing, and it was this otherworldly ability to seize the moment that allowed Samar to set up knockout strikes with even the simplest of movements. Just like the greatest, Samar was adept at subtly driving his opponents right into his rear hand. Other times, Samar would casually walk backwards until he found the exact moment when his opponent was unprepared and off balance. And not to push the point too much, but Samart shared yet one more attribute with his greatest of all time boxing counterpart, feigning fatigue or injury in order to bait his opponents and then punishing them for their mistakes. When Samart went in for the kill, he gave his opponents no room to breathe. Keeping his competitors on their back foot unbalanced them and provoked panicked, rushed, sloppy strikes which Smart could then intercept with his own. To draw out attacks, Smart kept his head far forward, in a position much more like a boxer than a Muay Thai fighter. The moment his opponent's hand left their guard, Smart was already slipping, his loaded lead foot helping him to drop forward and counter their attack. By evading his opponent's punch and intercepting them as they moved in, he effectively doubled the impact of his strike. And lastly, just because there wasn't enough skill packed into one human being already, Samart also had a highly developed long guard, which he used to block his opponent's vision, steer them off balance, and set up holds and strikes. The long guard also provided a great tool from which Samart could get into clinching range gliding his extended arm inside his opponent's strike to establish a hold. From there, he could pull them right into a knee or elbow, or simply throw them to the floor. In this sequence, Samart creates his own opening by pulling down his opponent's guard. Samart is one of the few fighters that could seriously warrant an hour-long breakdown, and should be studied closely by serious practitioners from all disciplines. He was one of the first to show how two entirely contrasting styles could fit together, and was a harbinger to how that concept would eventually change combat sports forever. Who knows what unique blends will be tied together in the future, but for now, it's worthwhile to remember. Fight smart. Fight some art. If you're interested in using footwork like Samart and Ali, you can check out my best-selling book Footwork Wins Fights. And if you're someone who's fascinated by how different forms of martial arts can blend together or work against each other, then I suggest you check out our new graphic novel, Mortal Weapons. Written by myself and illustrated by the great Iman Malki Rashid, it comes in at a hefty 100 pages with an 8x11 page size and is full of real-life strategies and techniques. And best of all, if you pre-order right now, you can purchase Mortal Weapons for only $6.99. The links are in the description and the comments below. From the Modern Martial Artist, this has been David Christian, wishing you happy training.